Okay, guys, we're learning about exponential functions. Exponential functions are really pretty simple. They're either growth or decay, and we'll talk about what that means. It's always in this form. Most of the time, they'll put parentheses around the B, and that's what you'll see. A, this number in front here that does not have the exponent on it, that is always your initial Um, value. This is also your your y-intercept. This is also your starting amount. B is your rate. It's either a growth rate or a decay rate. It is always the rate. If B is bigger than one, it's growth. If B is smaller than one, it's a decay. X, which is your exponent up here, is almost always time. So we're gonna just take a look at key features on the, on the graph and pay attention to the important parts. So the domain of this graph, you can see it has arrows on both ends. This one is gonna to continue to go right forever. And this one, it is going up, but if you look, it's going wider. So it is getting wider as we go. So the domain is all real numbers. Now this would be different if they have any kind of close, any kind of circle on here that eliminates part of the graph. The range, however, is kind of special. If you look at this graph, it's coming down and it's basically flattening out at negative one. It looks like it's touching it, but we'll talk about it on the next page that it's not actually touching it. So n y has to be bigger than negative one. It is not touching, so you cannot put the equal to. On exponential functions, you're never allowed to put the equal to on the range. Then for your y-intercept, our y-intercept is pretty simple. It's right there. It's at 2. Perfect. And I want you to notice something. Apologies about the bell. I want you to notice, let me zoom out a little bit. This negative 1 right here. this negative one right here, that's where we get this from. That's where this line comes from. Now the horizontal asymptote is simply this line that it's getting so close it's basically touching. So the horizontal asymptote is just y equals negative one. It's what the graph's getting really close to. our domain in this one. Again, it's going to go this way forever. It's going to go up and over. It's still getting wider as we go this way. So it's going to be all real numbers. The range is going to be y is greater than negative 2. And our y-intercept, it's not very pretty. But I'm going to show you how you can find it. If we put in 0 for the x right here, zero right here in this, I would have, I'll do it right here, f of zero equals one half two to the zero minus two. Anything to the zero power is just one. So I have one half minus two. So I have negative one and a half. So my y-intercept is just y equals negative 1.5. Horizontal asymptote, again, it's y equals whatever you got here. And again, if you look at the, at the equation, it's your number at the end. It's the number, it's your constant term at the end. That's where we get this line from, which is where we get our horizontal asymptote from. 
That's also where we get the range from. Let's talk about what an asymptote is because it's a bit confusing the first time you learn about it. So open up your book. The horizontal asymptote is just a line that continually approaches um, a given curve but does not meet it at any finite distance. Basically, what is it getting close to but never touching? We're going to look at what happens. This is a decay because this is smaller than 1. So that means, you know, let's do a quick, I'm going to go back to the front for a second. The very bottom, I'm going to add growth. Growth always looks like this. Always is going up. So this one, this one would be a growth. So I'm going to label this a growth. Decay always is getting smaller to the right. So growth is increasing on the right. Decay is decreasing on the right. So this one would be a decay. Growth goes up to the right. Decay goes down. Back to our table. Okay, we're going to just take this equation and we're going to plug these numbers in. Now, I'm going to show you how to do this so that you understand why we're getting really, really close to the horizontal asymptote of negative 3. So I'm going to go ahead and say f of 0 is equal to 2.50 minus 3. Now, I'm going to go ahead and help you use your calculator to remind you this is function notation. I'm going to just put in, you just put in the part after the equal sign. So 2, let me try to turn on the brightness for you. Okay. 2 parentheses 0.5 to the 0 minus, which is a subtraction, 3, I'm getting negative 1. Now if you just arrow up, see how I turned it blue? Press enter, it'll copy it, and we can just go in and edit it. So I'm going to change that, that 0 to a 1. I get a negative 2. I'm going to change it to a 10. I'm getting negative 2.95. Da, 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 da. I want to actually, I'm going to see if this will work. I want to have it tell me as a fraction. Yeah, that's worse. I'm going to go with this one. Negative 100. Now it's not actually negative 3. Let me see if I can get, let me see if I can show you. I'm going to do this part. I want it to show me as a fraction. Can you see how it's 1 over such a big number that it's basically 0? It's not really 0, but it's basically 0. So if this is almost 0, take away 3. This is about, this means about, not exactly, negative 3. And it doesn't, um, it's not actually touching, but it's so close that it might as well be. Apologies. I'm going to show you um, the 100 one. Hopefully this will help you connect. I'm going to think of this as 1 half to the 100 power minus 3. Well, I would have to put this to the 100 power. So I would have 2 times 1 to the 100 over 2 to the 100. Subtract 3. Well, 2 to the 100 power means 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 100 times. This is going to be such a big number. 
if you're sharing two pieces of pizza with basically the whole world, you're basically getting nothing. Could we figure out what tiny percentage you're getting? Yeah, but in real life, it's basically zero, and then the minus three, it's negative three. Now let's look at a growth one. This was a decay. Let's look at a growth. Notice that my B is bigger than one. I already know it's gonna get close to five, but we need to look and see what happens. Um, we need to look and see what happens with each of these numbers. So what I'm gonna do again, I'm gonna work backwards. I'm gonna go from one to negative 100. F of one, four to the one power is just four, so two times four plus five, getting eight plus five, I'm getting 13. I'm gonna do zero. F of zero. Anything to the zero is just one. Two times one is two. Two plus five. Seven. Let's try negative 10. Now it's starting to get ugly. I'm gonna use the calculator. Two parentheses four. The parentheses are parentheses are important because it means the power is only on the four. I'm using the negative ten. When I say negative, I mean this one. This one's subtract. You can't see. The black negative is subtract. The white negative is just a negative. And then I made sure I arrowed out of the power because I don't want it to be plus five up here in the power. I need to have it be plus five down here. Ugh, that's ugly. I want it as a fraction, so I'm gonna press control, uh, control enter. Hmm, it's basically five. It's not quite exactly five. You can see here as a fraction, it's not quite five, but here it's basically five. So I'm gonna write this ugly fraction help you see that it's not exactly five but it's close enough to five that we're happy and then if we do the negative 100 again I'm just gonna arrow up copy edit oh wow I don't I can't even see that all that's so many numbers that's so many numbers I can't even goodness too much I'm gonna say control enter to get it as a decimal. Hey look, it is five. It's so close to five that it might as well be five. So it's important to understand what these mean. This is an X and a Y. X and a Y is always a point. If I was graphing this, I'm just gonna give you a quick graph. At zero, I'd be at seven. At one, I'd be at 13. At negative 10, which is over here somewhere, I'd be basically at 5. And if I keep going, so I'll just draw a curve that's basically on this line. It's not allowed to actually go below it. And it should be going up to the right. Now let's say that they gave me this table and told me it was an exponential function. We can actually find the exponential function using the spreadsheet. We can talk about that a little bit later when we're getting ready for the star. Now we're going to talk about writing the exponential equation. The first thing I do is where is my y-intercept? Got a point right here. y equals 3. Next thing I do 
is what is my horizontal asymptote? HA for horizontal asymptote is that y equals negative 2. The equation is always a, b, x, and then whatever your horizontal asymptote goes here. I'm going to call it h just to make it easy. Plus. So, so far this is what I know. I don't know what a and b are, but I know it's going to be minus 2. I'm going to need a few more points than just this one. So what I'm going to do is I got another point right here. We're going to come back to these. So this is at 3. You'll notice that this has been, it's down 2. Whatever your horizontal asymptote is, I'm going to take this and go up to 1, 2. That would be 5. That's going to be your initial value because that's how much you started with before they took this away. So I know that a equals 5. So now I have f of x equals 5. Still don't know what my growth rate or my decay rate is. Minus 2. All right. Now we know that if I plug in, I know I have the point negative 1 and positive 8. I know I have that. So if I plug in negative 1, I need to get 8 out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my equation. I know that 8 equals 5, negative 1, x minus 2. Oh, I'm sorry, this is b. b and x would be negative 1. Now you should be able to just do an end solve. It's one half. So now my equation is Simple enough. Now I'm going to tell you on the star, it's multiple choice. I don't actually do this on the star. I look at my options, graph them, and move on. See which one matches my points. It's really all I do. Okay, on this one, let's take out the key features again. I need my y-intercept. I need my horizontal asymptote. So my y-intercept is 7. My horizontal asymptote is 2. Now this has been moved up to, so I'm going to need to take this away. To get my initial value, it's going to be my y-intercept. Take away 2, and that again is 5. Need a perfect, perfect point. my horizontal asymptote. So right now what I have is f of x is equal to 5. I don't know if it's, I don't know my growth rate, but I do know my horizontal asymptote is 2. Now I'm noticing something. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to here. It's doubling. I'm betting that this is a 2 because it's double. The distance from the horizontal asymptote to the y-intercept is 5, and then from the y-intercept to my next perfect point is another 5. I'm going to try graphing this and see if it matches. I'm using menu 3, 1, and I'm just going to put it in. to the x plus 2. Okay. 
Now it looks similar to me, but the window's different. So I'm going to go to menu 5-1 and check my points. Um, that's not what I meant. Oh, I pressed document. Menu 5-1. Okay, perfect. That's where I want my y-intercept at. Now if I plug in 1, I should get out 12. Hey, it works. Easy cheese. Love that. Okay, that's it. Just remember, check your horizontal asymptote as the line is getting close to. On If you're in your table right here, if you're in your graph, if you graph the equation, go to menu, and if you go to table, notice what number is getting really, really close to as we go this direction forever. It's basically two at this point. That's your horizontal asymptote. That's it. Thanks, guys.